Well, the weather's getting colder and we will all soon be spending lots more time indoors. And you know, some folks get depressed about that, but here on Del Marva Life, we like to look at the bright side. So maybe curl up in front of the fireplace with a glass of wine and a good book. Good book. Uh, one book about our area, as a matter of fact, stands head and shoulders above all others in popularity. You may know the name Chesapeake by James Mishner. Now, Mishner died in 1997, the ripe old age of 90 years old. A lot of us know the story of Chesapeake. However, how much do we really know about James Mishner? His own story, as it turns out, is just chock full of twists and turns as his novel. As a matter of fact, Jim Duffy, the author of Secrets of the Eastern Shore, is just the man here to tell us all about the story of the storyteller. How are you? I'm good. How are you this afternoon? I'm great. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Now, he wrote Chesapeake in 78, is that right? Yeah, 78. He'd made money by then. He was richer than God by Oh, then. that's pretty rich. Oh my. He gave away $100 million during his lifetime to charity. Wow. $13 million to his college alone. He always said he could have retired uh, after his very first book, which was called Tales from the South Pacific, and that's where the Broadway show South Pacific came from. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So he moved to, to write Chesapeake. He moved to the Chesapeake he St. Michael's, did. So, right? Yeah, yeah. D despite being this filthy rich guy, he never kind of took the easy way out. All of his books, Hawaii and Alaska and Texas and Chesapeake, he would go to the location. He would live there for years. Uh, he lived in St. Michael's. He had a place on Railroad Avenue for a while and then a place on the waterfront for a while, going out with watermen and talking to farmers and doing oh, everything wow. else. But when people came to his house to visit him, they were a little shocked by the surroundings. It was shabby as shabby could be. No, uh Threads all coming out of the chairs. The, his desk was like two like portable tables pushed together. He always had like safety pins, a big cache of safety pins, because his old school typewriter, all the keys would stick and he'd have to get under there oh, and try serious? and try and do this. So the best was in the kitchen though. The freezer from floor to ceiling. Mrs. Paul's Fish Sticks. Oh Somewhere along the line, he became friends with Edward the Big Fish Cake Pizik, I think his name was, who founded the company. And he always sent James Missioner all of his fish cakes. When, when they had people over for dinner, the, the, all the condiments, the tartar sauce for the fish cakes and the ketchup and the mustard, they were all in little packets. They'd been liberated from area restaurants. Oh, my goodness. And brought to the multi-millionaire's multi house. James so, so he always said, I live every day as if the Depression were coming back. Which is when he grew up, his childhood? Yeah. So he was born in 1907. Don't really know where. He never knew where. It's, it's kind of ironic that the storyteller who told all these stories of all these places never even knew his own story. He was abandoned by his mother, oh. ended up in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, in the home of a woman named Mabel Missioner. She was a widow. His birth certificate says Mabel was his mother and Mabel's husband was his father, but Mabel's husband had died six years before Missioner was born. And none of these mysteries were ever solved. She ran a makeshift orphanage out of her house, which was like a kind of a challenge for, for Missioner because there were all these other kids in the house and like mothers would come to visit these kids and all that kind of thing, but nobody ever came to see him. Oh, but he dear. kind of fought his way through this tough situation uh, and ended up obsessed with classical music, Enrico Caruso particularly. He was the valedictorian of his high school class and ended up going to, uh, to, going to Swarthmore. And that's where things took another tough turn for him because he got these anonymous letters from somebody in Mabel's family saying, you're not a, a real missioner. You're not a biologist. You're not her by And he never no. knew that he wasn't her biological oh son. Goodness. So where do you think his big break came from? Did he, did he actually made the big turn? Yeah, after college he did all kinds of different things, but then he joined the Navy in World War II. Okay. And he was assigned um, over in uh, the Pacific Theater. It was a complete and total accident. The guy who was in charge of making his assignment mistook his last name for the name of a big fancy schmancy admiral, which was spelled kind of similarly out there, and thought he needed VIP treatment. So he assigned this guy to go follow sailors around uh, on their off-duty time and off, just write about all their adventures and things like that, which right. is how 
he got to Tales of the South Pacific. Okay. Yeah. And the rest is history. And the rest <laughs> is indeed history. Secrets of the Eastern Shore oh author Jim Duffy, as always, fascinating wow. story. About a storyteller. About a storyteller. Thank All you. Right. Thank See you, you next week.